Some of you are already there, which is fantastic, and you didn't take the long way around, which is great. If I wanted to take the long way around, I would write everything that I did for A, but instead of twos, you're going to replace them all with sevens, and it's literally identical. But what I can do is say, hold on, I, I don't have to go the long way around. I can recognize how chain rule works, right? You differentiate the inside, then you differentiate the outside. Let me rehearse it for you, right? What is the inside function in this case? Oh. It's that 7x right there, right? And we know what the derivative of 7x is. It's just 7. Very good. So I'll write that down. Derivative of the inside, done. Then I think about the derivative of the outside. What is the outside function in this case? It's e to the power of a thing, right? What have we established happens when you differentiate e to the power of a thing? It, no change at all, right? So that e to the power of a thing becomes e to the power of that thing, and you're done, okay? Inside, outside, finished, okay? Uh, have a look over at part E. Can you have a go at part E for me? I think. Again, what's the inside function in this case? It's the 5x, so when you differentiate that, you just get 5, very good. And then you look at the outside function. Ah, now this pesky minus sign is hanging around, right? So it's like not exactly this, right? So let me remind you. Um, just come back to this guy. Derivative of x squared, we know what it is, right? What's the derivative of negative x squared? What effect does that minus sign have? Yeah, you kind of just like, I think most of us kind of just ignore it for a second. Right? We just ignore it. We're like, I know what the other bit is, the important part. And then we just put that minus sign back, right? So I should be getting this. There's that function. It didn't really change. I wouldn't really write it like this finally, though. It's weird to have that 5 that minus in there. I'm going to write it like so. OK? All right, now, um, this time, I actually skipped over d, which was one I wanted to look at. I want you to think about it without writing anything down. I just want you to think about what is it doing, right? Have a look at the function, right? It says e, I'll write it down, but we don't need to actually write anything for this. I just want you to think about it. e to the minus x. I want you to go all the way back to when we were doing functions and graphing and transforming what graphs looked like. What effect does this have on our original function? We know what this guy looks like. We graphed it. We, we saw it in Desmos. What difference does that minus sign have? Hmm. Oh, this really makes you think. Okay, e to the minus x. Go ahead, pull open your Desmos window again. Before you put in this function, I'd love you to just hide the derivative again. The main reason I want you to hide that derivative is so that you can think. So here, this is my e to the x, right? This is e to the x. I want us to think before we sort of pop it in, what's that, um, what's that minus sign going to affect, have on the derivative, right? So let's go ahead. <clears throat> up there at the top, right? <clears throat> See where you've got your x power up there, right? Go ahead, just be very careful with your cursor, and slap a minus sign in front of that x. What effect did that have? There was a, and we've got to be really careful with our language here, right? It's tempting to use a word like invert, right? Because invert sort of means like, like sort of flip around. But in mathematics, it, like the inverse has a very specific technical meaning, which is not this, right? Do you remember we were talking about exponentials do have an inverse. What is it? It's not another exponential. What's the inverse of an exponential? Something we looked at last week. Starts with an L. It's a, say it loud and share, Bobby. A logarithm, right? So that's the inverse, right? This is not a log function. What is this? It's a bit weird. It's, it's still an exponential, but it's not exponentially increasing. It's not exponentially growing. We call this exponentially decreasing or exponentially decaying, right? So that word decay, um, if uh, it rings any bells from chemistry students, right? Radioactive decay looks like this. Right? It starts off real fast, and then as you have less and less radioactive stuff, it decays slower and slower and slower. That's why half-lives are important. Right? OK, what difference is this going to make to the derivative? Have a think. When we had a look at our original function, I'm just going to put it back. This guy was increasing, right? You told me it was always increasing. 
But now I've flipped it around. What can you tell me about it now? It's always decreasing. It's always like food going down, right? And it never, never turns around. So therefore, where should you expect this derivative to be? It's always going to be on the negative side. I asked you to hide that derivative. Can you put it back now? Right? There it is. Down the bottom there. See that? You're like, oh, there's this symmetry there. The derivative is always negative, but it gets less and less negative as you go. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, let's hide this. Now you can in your books. Let's think about this, right? So in your books, come back to writing this down. Just go here. If I want to differentiate this, it's still the same idea with chain rule. What is the inside function in this case? It's that negative x. Very good. There it is right there. So what's its derivative? Just that guy's derivative. It's minus 1, isn't it? Uh, just like this one was 5, uh, and this one was 2, and this one was 7. So in this case, it's minus 1. There's the inside function. Done. And then what's the derivative of the outside part? It's e to the power of a thing. So what happens to that? Same. Yeah, nothing happens, right? So I'm just going to write that e to the power of whatever was there before. Okay? Uh, and please notice that, by the way. It is e to the power of whatever was there before, whether it's a minus x or a 5x or a 7x or a 2x. That sort of carries along. Right? So I'll just tidy that up like so. And you can see the reason why we're down below the x-axis, as we'll point out, is because of that minus sign out the front. Okay?